Good morning, everybody. Morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome to our Sunday morning service. Uh, welcome to those watching online this morning. Uh, we're going to begin this morning, so I wonder if we could just um, stand at this time. If we could just, um, let's just begin finis finishing in our conversations as we just focus and concentrate on the Lord this morning. Amen. Is anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord on the, on the 30th of October? Amen. Some of us may have had a long week. We may have had a long month. It's coming to the end of the month. But God is good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Um, I just wonder if we could just all pray together at this time. Let's just all pray together. Father, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we just want to glorify him. Just begin to glorify him in your prayers this morning. Lord, we just give you all the praise. Lord, you are worthy to be praised. Father, we give you thanks. Oh, God, Lord, we give you thanks, Lord, and we are grateful. Hallelujah, Lord, that we're in this house, Lord. Another time, Lord, to worship you. Another time to give you praise. Another time to lift up your mighty name, oh God. Hallelujah. Your name is mighty. Hallelujah. Your name is awesome, oh Father God. Lord, we just glorify you this day, oh Lord. And we pray, oh God, Lord, that your presence would fill this place. Lord, I even pray for a freedom on everybody in this place, Lord, to give you worship, Lord, to give you praise. Father, Lord, we pray, Lord, that we would give everything, Lord, give our all this morning, that we would leave nothing behind, Lord, Lord, as we give everything to you. Lord, all the glory belongs to you. Hallelujah. All the worship belongs to you. Hallelujah. All the praise belongs to you. You are Hallelujah. awesome, Lord. And we declare that in this Hallelujah. place, in this house this morning, that Thank you are Jesus. indeed awesome. Hallelujah. That there is nobody like Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we give you praise. You we give you praise. Hallelujah. You, we give you we praise. Can we just name. begin to give him praise, church, right we now? You, Hallelujah. You let's let some Our praise rise this God. morning. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Oh, he is so worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, give you we the thank you, Jesus. Oh, Hallelujah. you are so awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank, thank you, you, Jesus. Praise the thank Lord. You, we just want to give him thanks. Thank is anybody you, grateful? Hallelujah. Are we grateful that we're here Hallelujah. in our right minds this morning? Hallelujah. We are clothed. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Nobody forced us to Thank be here Lord. this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're not Hallelujah. here in hiding this Hallelujah. morning. We're not here in secrecy Hallelujah. Hallelujah. this morning. But we're here of Hallelujah. our own free will, and we're going to give God Hallelujah. thanks. Hallelujah. We're going to give him Thank praise. Hallelujah. So the, the first song says, give Thank thanks Jesus. with a grateful Hallelujah. heart. Thank Give you, thanks to the Holy One because He Thank is the Holy Lord. One. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give thanks Thank you, because Jesus. He's given Jesus Christ Thank you, Lord. His Son. Hallelujah. The song goes on to declare that if you are weak this morning, Hallelujah, hallelujah then you can declare that also that you are strong hallelujah. because of what Jesus Christ has done. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Give thanks, give thanks, with a grateful heart, with a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One, to the Holy One, give thanks, because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son, give thanks, with a grateful heart, a grateful anybody grateful heart. this morning? Give thanks to the Holy, to the One. Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Sing it again this morning. 
Kisa. With a grateful With heart. With a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. To the Holy One. Give thanks. Because he's given. Because he's given. Jesus Christ. His Son. Of what because of what the Lord has the done, Lord has done for, us. for us, and now, and now, let the weak say, I am strong, let the poor say, I am rich, because of what. Give thanks, give thanks with a grateful heart. With a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One. To the Holy One, give thanks because He's given. Because He's given. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. His Son. His Son. Give thanks. With a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy to the One. Holy Hallelujah! One. Give thanks because He's given. Because He's given. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. His Son. Because, because of, what of what the Lord, the Lord has done, done and for us, for us. And, now, and now, let the weak, if you are weak this morning, declare that you are strong. strong. Hallelujah. Let the poor say, I say I am rich, am rich because, because of what the Lord has the done. Lord for us, for us. And, now, and now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich, rich because of what the Lord has done oh, for us. Hallelujah. For So what the Lord has done for us, for us. Give thanks, give, give thanks. thanks. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank Jesus. You, Jesus. Give thanks. We thank you, Lord. We give you thanks, Lord. Give thank thanks, you, give thanks. Hallelujah. We give you thanks. Give thanks. We give you praise this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. We glorify you. Give thanks. We bless your holy name, Hallelujah. Lord. We lift you up. Give thanks. We honor your name this morning. You, give Jesus. thanks. Give thanks. Hallelujah. We thank, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Anybody thank grateful you, this morning? Thank you for life. Thank Hallelujah. You, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank, thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We have so much to give thanks thank for. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise thank you, the Jesus. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, thank Jesus. You. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Zephaniah Hallelujah. 3 and verse 17 says, The Lord your God is with you. The mighty warrior who saves, he will take great delight in you. He, in his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. Hallelujah. We're going to declare this morning that the Lord is mighty, that he is mighty to save. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we want to declare this morning, church, that he rose and that he Thank conquered you, the grave. Hallelujah. Does anybody Hallelujah. believe that this morning? Hallelujah. Are we a church that believes that he Hallelujah. rose and Hallelujah. that he conquered the grave? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are we're also going to declare that everyone needs forgiveness. The kindness of the Savior. He is a kind God. He is a forgiving God. He teaches Amen. us to forgive. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He is full of grace. He is Thank full of mercy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We want to praise you this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just give him a shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him a shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Everyone needs compassion. Everyone needs compassion. A love that's never failing. Let mercy, let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness. The kindness of the Savior. The hope of nations. Everyone needs. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy, let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations, the hope of nations, hope of nations. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Forever, forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Savior, 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 he can move the mountains. God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me. So take me as you find me. All my fears and failures. Hallelujah. And fill my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender. So take me as you find me. All my fears and failures. And fill my life again. Give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender. I surrender. Yes. Savior, He can move the mountain. My God. My God is mighty. Anybody believe that this morning? Hallelujah. He is mighty to 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Hallelujah. thank you, Jesus. Aren't you thank glad you, that he thank conquered you, the Jesus. grave? Thank you, Jesus. Aren't you glad that he Hallelujah. rose again and conquered Hallelujah. the grave? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That he's no longer in the grave, but he Hallelujah. rose Hallelujah. and conquered the grave. Hallelujah. You, Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank we you, Jesus. thank you that you can move any mountain. Thank you, Lord. Thank Hallelujah. You, Lord. Does anybody need a mountain thank to be you, moved? Lord. Thank in you your Lord. life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus. Let me ask that again. Does anybody Hallelujah. have a mountain in their lives that Thank you, Jesus. you need God you, Lord. to Hallelujah. move, your Savior to move? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We declare that he Thank you, Jesus. can move mountains. Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We want to declare, Thank you, continue to declare in this Thank place Jesus. this morning Thank you, Lord. that we serve a God who is unchangeable. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. We serve a God who is unshakable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank we you, serve Lord. a God who is unstoppable. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't hear anybody this morning. Hallelujah. 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 We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 We serve a God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank who was not Jesus. created by human hands. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Men didn't get together and decide, Thank let's you, just Lord. create God. Hallelujah. 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 We serve a God who doesn't Hallelujah. seek permission Hallelujah. from man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, of what Jesus. he wants to do. He's not Hallelujah. dependent Thank you, Jesus. on any man. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can we thank just give God Lord. praise for that this morning? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to declare that thank you, he is God alone this morning. If that's all right, we're going to declare that this morning, that he is God alone. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are not a God. Mm. You're not a God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give by your plan. That's just the way it is. You are not a God. You are not a God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give by your plans that's just the way let's sing that again you are not a god you are not a god created by human hands by human hands you are not a god on any mortal man any mortal man you are not a god in need of anything we can give anything we can give by your plans that's just the way it is. You are God, you are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. Let's declare that again. You are God. You are God alone, from before time began, you are on your throne, you are God alone, and right now, and right now, in the good times, in the good times and bad, you are God alone, you are on your throne, hallelujah, you are God alone, hallelujah, you are God. You're the only God whose power none can contend. None can contend. You're the only God whose name and praise will never end. You're the only God who's worthy. Thank you, Lord. Of everything we can give. You are God. That's just the way. Let's sing that one again. You're the only God, you're, you're the, the only, only God, God whose power none can contend. None can contend. Thank you, Lord. You're the only God whose name and praise. Praise will never end. You're, you're the, the only God, God who's worth of everything. Of everything we can give. You are God. You are God. And that's just the way it is. That's the way it is. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You are God. You are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, and right now, in the good times, hallelujah, you are on your throne. You are God. You are God alone. You are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, in the good times, hallelujah, you are on your throne. You are God alone. Let's declare that he's unchangeable, unchangeable. Unshakable, unshakable, unstoppable. That's who you are. Unchangeable, unchangeable, unshakable, unstoppable. That's who you are. Unchangeable, unchangeable, unshakable, unshakable, unstoppable. That's who he is. That's who you are. Let's declare that in this place this morning. Unchangeable. Unshakeable. Unshakeable. Unstoppable. Unstoppable. That's who he is, church. That's who you are. One more time. Unchangeable. Unchangeable. Unshakeable. Unshakeable. Unstoppable. 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 Oh, that's who you that's are. You are God alone. You are, you are God. You are God. From before time began, you are on your throne. You are God alone. And hallelujah. And right now, in the good times, you are on your throne. You are on your throne. Yes, He is. You are God alone. You are God alone. From before time. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, in the good times, the good times and bad. Hallelujah. You are on your throne. Thank you, Jesus. You are God alone. You are God alone. You are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne. You are on your throne. Yes, He is. You are God alone. And right now. You are on your throne. Praise the Lord. You are God alone. You are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. Unchangeable, unchangeable, unshakable, unstoppable. That's who you are. Unchangeable, unchangeable, unshakable, unstoppable. That's who you are. Unchangeable, unchangeable, unshakable. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Unchangeable Hallelujah. God. Unshakable Hallelujah. God. Unstoppable God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there a situation that God cannot resolve? Hallelujah. He's unchangeable, unshakable, unstoppable. That's who you are, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus Hallelujah. said, I am the light of the world. Thank you, Jesus. Whoever follows me will never Thank walk you, in darkness, but Thank will have you. the light of life. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What a reward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Thank light you, of life. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Because we are followers of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have the benefits Thank you, Jesus. of being part of his family. Thank you, Hallelujah. Lord. We have hope. Thank you, Jesus. We have peace. Thank you. Jesus. Hallelujah. In our storms, in our situations. Thank you, Jesus. We have Thank strength. You, Thank you, Hallelujah. Lord. Because that strength comes not Thank from you, us, but you, from him. Mm. Hallelujah. What a mighty God. Thank you, Lord. What a mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Bless Thank the you, Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to ask the worship team to remain. I have a job for you. Bless the Lord. Good morning and welcome to our service this morning. We are the New Testament Church of God Community Church in Aldershot. And it is a pleasure and a privilege to welcome each and every one here today. And um, our lovely sister Diane has a welcome song that she often sings, and I'm going to ask her to lead. Oh, which one? <laughs> We're glad one now. Yeah. Okay. To lead um, a welcome song so everyone will, s will feel welcome. Okay. Good morning, everybody. It's really so lovely to see you there, and I'm so happy you're here. I can just imagine how Jesus feels. So... This song involves everybody. It goes, I'm glad you could come to our church today to learn about Jesus and follow his ways. All grandmas, when we say grandmas, if you're a grandma, please stand. Grandpas, mothers, dads, sisters, brothers, you've made the dear Savior glad. Okay? We're glad you could come to God's house today where we learn about Jesus and follow his ways all grandmas okay um. <laughs> that was a trial go <laughs> we're glad you could come to God's house today where we learn about Jesus and follow his ways all grandmas all grandpas, all mothers, all dads, all sisters, all brothers, you made the dear Savior glad. We're glad you could come to God's house today, where we learn about Jesus and follow his way. All grandmas, all grandpas, all mothers. All dads, all sisters, all brothers, you made the dear Savior glad. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Dyke. Give yourselves a clap. Bless the Lord. Hopefully everyone feels welcome and we didn't miss out anyone. But if we did, you are very welcome to be here. God bless you. And we're going to have... Um, our announcements in a couple of minutes but before we do I just want to welcome there's a couple of people that um, we haven't seen for a little while and I just want to welcome them um, in the house today um, Claire in the orange <laughs> it's so lovely to see you and your son AJ RJ RJ lovely to see you both today bless you and sister Opal and family, it is lovely to see you as well. Bless you. And everyone else, as I say, you are very, very welcome to be here. Uh, we're going to have the announcements now. Thank you for joining us at NTCG Aldershot Community Church.
Thank you for joining us at NTCG Aldershot Community Church. Please pay careful attention to the following announcements. Our all-age Sunday school teaching sessions take place today at 12.30 p.m. after our morning worship service. All are welcome. An Aldershot Churches Together prayer session will take place tomorrow evening at 7.30 p.m. at St. Michael's Church, 120 Church Lane East. All are welcome. Our meeting schedule continues this week with our phone line prayer meetings on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. and Saturdays at 8 a.m. Please use the details on your screen to join. Please join us for Bible study this Thursday at 7.30 p.m. on Zoom, as we continue our journey through 2 Corinthians. This week, we will be looking at Chapter 11. Please go to our website at www.ntcgacc.org.uk for more details. Everyone is welcome. On Saturday the 10th of December, our Administrative Bishop, Clayton Grandison, will be hosting a Vision Roadshow at NTCG Willsden, launching his new vision for the Church. It promises to be an impacting session and one that will be extremely important for our Church in these last days. We shall be hiring a minibus to attend the Roadshow for our region. There is a list in the foyer for those who would like to attend, and a travel fare of £5 must be paid within 14 days to confirm the space. For further information please speak to Pastor Malcolm. For those who would like to participate in online giving, please send your tithes and offering to the details on screen, and ensure your name is included in the reference. God bless you and enjoy the rest. With our um, tithes and offerings. So I wonder if we could um, just prepare at this time. We just have some ushers. Um, if you are giving this morning, please don't forget to use... Um, our charity gift aid declaration um, little form here. There's ushers at the back there. So if you don't have one, uh, please just raise your hand and I'm sure an usher will get to you. Um, and please fill this out to the best of your ability um, to continue to um, help the church as we continue the ministry in this town. Um, we're able to claim back um, 25p um, in every pound. So we, we do need um, you to fill out these forms correctly if possible, okay? Please follow the ushers. We also have a card machine. This morning, our secretary is on the um, left-hand side here, your right-hand side. Um, so if you wish to make a card payment, then you're, you're able to go to the secretary at the side there. Please follow the, the directions. There'll be ushers who are, will be directing you out um, this morning to the receptacles this morning. Um, and let's give with a smile this morning. Amen? Amen. Let's give cheerfully this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to declare God as the beautiful one this morning. We're going to declare that he um, has unfailing love this morning and declare that his glory fills the skies this morning. We just want to give him honor. So if you can just stand um, or if you're still preparing your offering and writing out your form, that's fine this morning. But let's stand and give God some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Beautiful one, beautiful one, I love, beautiful. 
give thanks for the offering. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, we give you thanks for the gifts, Lord, that have been given, the tithes and the offering, oh Father. We thank you, Lord, for those who have given this morning, oh Father, Lord. We know, oh God, that you are God who blesses you, oh God, who sees, Lord, even in times, Lord, that we're in, oh God, Lord. And we, I pray, oh God, Lord, that um, this, this, these monies, oh Father, Lord, will be used wisely, oh Father, Lord, for your kingdom on, on earth, oh God, Lord. I pray, Lord, that they will be set forth, Lord, what they need to be, to be done, oh God, Lord, that you have will to be done. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that you will restore. We thank you, Lord, for blessings, Lord, that would come even from these monies that have been collected this morning. We just give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Maureen. Good morning, church. Praise God. A pleasant good morning to those who are watching online as well. Just a quick announcement. Amen. It's almost that time of the year, um, the time when we pause as a church to honor, as it were, our leaders. First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 17 says, The elders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honor, especially those whose work is preaching and teaching. For the scripture says, do not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain, and the worker deserves his wages. We are going to be honoring our pastor. We'll be making a presentation to our pastor and his family in the month of December. In fact, let me get my notes out. It will be on December the 7, 18th. Thank you. The seven, December the 18th, we will make a presentation to our pastor. As such, we will ask the church to participate in, in this. Now, when you give your offering, there are different ways in which you can participate. When you give your offering, you can reference it on your envelope, pastor's presentation. So apart from your tithing or your offering, you can also give by way of um, card as well, and you reference it on your envelope, pastor's presentation. For those who are watching online, you can also participate in this. So that will be on the 17th of December. On the, no, the 18th, sorry, I've got two dates in my mind. The 18th of December will be your pastor's presentation, and you will hear more about this during the announcement as the weeks go by. On the 17th of December, we would also like to have a uh, Christmas breakfast for our seniors, all the seniors. You are not only, we are not only catering for seniors who are members of this, this, this church. You may be friends of the church. You are maybe in the community as well. So it's open to those in the community as well as members of the church. We would like to have a seniors Christmas breakfast on the 17th of December. What date is that? Thank you very much, the 17th of December. Now, we are going to ask people, again, if you could sponsor a senior. You can sponsor a senior. I think we agreed on the price. I think it's 
five pounds? Right, five pounds. Five pounds to sponsor. For example, I know who I'm going to sponsor as a senior. Uh, so I'm going to sponsor a senior. So I, I will make tickets available. So if you could purchase a ticket for a senior. Now, if no one sponsors a particular senior, it doesn't mean that you are excluded. Everyone is welcome. Is that understood? Everyone is welcome. Seniors, 60 and over. So if you're 60, age 60 and over, you are welcome to a Christmas breakfast on the 17th of December. If you'd like to sponsor a senior, it's only five pounds. If a senior is not sponsored, you are not excluded. Everybody is welcome. You hear more about these announcements as the, the weeks go by. God bless you. Thank you. Can we give uh, Pastor Linford a round of applause, please? What about if you actually look um, over 60? Can you qualify? No? Okay. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. More cream I need. Okay. We are blessed this morning to have uh, with us uh, Nigel Harrison and some people from the Tear Fund organization. I've known of Tear Fund uh, for a number of years now, a number of years, um, and recently at our national uh, convention, um, Nigel had the opportunity just to share um, very, very briefly uh, with our national church, with the, the congregants there, of the, the, the plans and the desires of Tear Funds to work closely with our organi organization up and down um, the UK. And I think it'll be, I, I thought it'd be a very good opportunity to, to kind of uh, invite him and, and, and team to speak to us at uh, Aldershot. Um, our theme of serving God and serving our community is not just related to our local community. We are part of an, a worldwide and international uh, community as well because we have an international God. Amen? So without further ado, I'm going to invite Nigel just to come. Can we put our hands together for him? I know we can do a lot better than that. Can we do a big old shot welcome? Well, good morning, everyone. It's such a privilege to be with you here at, with the New Testament Church of God here in Aldershot. Thank you so much for this warm welcome. Thank you for the privilege of sharing about Tear Fund's work around the world. And thank you, Bishop Malcolm, as well, um, for your very kind invitation. We are, as he said, we're really thrilled with our growing relationship with the New Testament Church of God. I was privileged to be at convention, as, as, as Bishop Malcolm said, this summer, and it is a joy to be with you here in this church this morning. So I want, if I can, in these few minutes, just to give you a little bit of an introduction to Tear Fund's work, to give you a couple of examples of what that looks like around the world, to look at what the Bible really says about bringing good news to those who live in poverty, and then to finish a bit by sharing how you might want to get involved with us if, 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 if you want to do that. Now, bear with me. It's always a real privilege to be invited to speak in Pentecostal churches. I grew up in the Church of England, so I always fear that I might be a bit low-key. So if I am, extend some grace to me. So I'm aware there may be one or two here this morning who don't know our work so well. So let me just give you a very quick overview of who we are as Tear Fund. We are a Jesus-centered relief and development organization. Thank you. Um, we've been around for more than 50 years. In fact, we were founded in 1968, exactly the same time as you were here in Aldershot. And we work in some 50 countries around the world with those who live in poverty. We respond to disasters. We work with communities to make them a little bit more resilient to shocks and disasters and to lift themselves out of poverty. But the key thing with Tear Fund, the thing that really sets us apart, we believe, from others, is that we do all of that with and through the local church and through local churches. And we believe that is the most effective way of bringing change to the lives of those who live in poverty and seeing God's kingdom come. Now, for all of us around the world, it's true here, isn't it? In Aldershot, it's been true all around the world. The last couple of years has be, have been like no other. What we've come to call at Tear Fund the triple C 
COVID, conflict, and of course the climate emergency. You know, for the first time in 30 years or so in the world of development, we sense that all those big statistics are going in the wrong direction. Number of people who go to bed hungry every night, more people push back into absolute poverty, democracy, political freedom, under pressure in so many places, the narrowing of what we might call the civil society space, and of course, the devastating effects of the climate emergency. And of course, this year, on top of all of that, we've had the tragic events in Ukraine. Please do keep that country in your prayers. And of course, that's affecting prices, as we know, for all of us all around the world, pushing up food prices, pushing up energy prices. It's been estimated that 250 million people, it's a bit difficult to get your head around that statistic. Think of Germany and France and the UK, Spain, add it all together, and then it's still not enough. 250 million people push back into absolute poverty by that combination of factors. How do we respond? What is God saying to us at this time? What does his word say? And how do we remain hopeful, faced with such unprecedented challenges? So I hope, with the wonders of technology, we're going to show a little video now. I was, a couple of months ago, I was in a place called Dawa region, Malawi, Southern Africa. This, I hope, is a story of hope. Guys, if we can play that first one, the one that's showed called Dawa, or Dawa, that would be great. Hi, I'm Nigel Harris, I'm Tier Fund's Chief Executive and I'm here in the amazing country of Malawi. It's a beautiful country with remarkable people. But it's a country that's going through tough times. Covid, these last couple of years, has had a big economic effect. Malawi's been hit by repeated cyclones. And of course, events in Ukraine, that tragedy that is happening there, has its reverberations here, even though we're thousands of miles away. Food prices are rocketing, energy prices are rocketing. All of that is hitting, of course, the poorest hardest. We're here in a rural community about an hour north of the capital city, the long way. has been working here with our local partner, Ministry of Hope, and local churches to really bring transformation to their local community. Starts with Bible studies, starts with prayer, starts with the community realizing who they are in Jesus and that God has resourced them. And then that translates into remarkable change. I'm standing very generously in the house of a lady called Alanette. She's a widow, her husband died. She was left with nothing. And yet, through the work that the church has done with her, through the training she's received, she's been able to grow groundnuts, grow soya, grow maize, completely rebuild a house. Everything that you see around me is hers. She's now keeping pigs, thanks to loans from the self-help group. She has not only transformed her own life, but she's been able to send her daughter to boarding school. And yet, that's just one story of thousands and thousands of people. There are more than 200 self-help groups in this community, all facilitated and looked after by the church. More than 100 of those have now come together to form the Yanko Cooperative, growing crops at scale, selling their crops into the markets in the long way. Again, taking up three and a half thousand households, 20,000 people out of poverty, we hope, on a permanent basis. It's a remarkable story of change. Earlier, I was listening to the ladies of those self-help groups sing a song of praise and prayer. Praise to God for all that he had done in their lives and a prayer, a prayer not for themselves, a prayer that Tier Fund and our local partners and the churches here could bring this kind of transformation to other communities. That is my prayer too. We believe that God can do us. Please join us on this journey of remarkable change that we're seeing here in Malawi.
privilege again this year to be traveling. Um, it is my greatest joy, other than speaking in churches, um, to, be, to actually be able to visit the communities in which Tear Fun works. You saw me there in Malawi. Earlier this year, I had the privilege of going to Bangladesh. Now, Bangladesh, very, very different context. There in Malawi, the church is very strong. Everywhere you go, you see churches. They reckon more than 80% of the population in Malawi would call themselves Christian. Bangladesh, it's less than 1%. And yet, we visited a little village about four hours out of the capital city, Taka, where Tear Fund and our church partner, there it was the Bangladesh Baptist Church Fellowship, again, doing very similar stuff, just providing Bible studies, training, encouragement about who you are in Jesus. And Pastor Shimon, who led those little churches, stood up in front of us as we visited and told us a few stories. And he said, Bible studies have met, Self-help groups, you heard them referred to there, typically women gathering together, saving money, loaning it out, women saving funds, taking those loans to generate income. In that community, there had been a focus on doing advocacy around child marriage. Child marriage had been a real problem in that area. Um, devastating for, for girls' life chances when they're forced into marriage very early in their teenage years. The church had worked against that. There had been no child marriages in that region for two years. The church was getting cash to widows. The church was talking to local government, again, about getting houses built in the village. It's government's responsibility. We saw some of those houses. There was a water point there for the whole community to use. It had been funded jointly by church and community. 100 families were using it. What was really interesting, there were 70 Muslim families, 30 Christian families all using it together. And Pastor Shimon said this, and this was really the bit that went to my heart. He said, before, he said, we were the poorer people. We were the marginalized. We used to hide on the edge of the village. Nobody would talk to us. Now we have self-confidence. Now we see change happening. Now we're working on all sorts of things. We're working on water management, working on the environment, we're working on putting better latrines in. We're using compost. We're doing all these things. And you could see the self-confidence coming through in him and those church members. And you know, when I, when I sit in these communities, which I say is a real joy of my life, incredibly difficult, I'm sorry, in different contexts, two things really strike me. One is that God is working in this place. You can sense the spirit as you walk around these villages. And then the second one is this. Why can't this happen everywhere? Why can't it happen to everywhere, in every community in which TFM works around the world where there is a church? And that is our hope and that is our vision. So let's think a little bit about what the Bible says about poverty and then think about God's mission, the good news for, for those who live in poverty. You know, the Bible tells us a story, doesn't it, that helps us understand God, helps us understand the world, helps us understand God's relationship with the world. A story of a God who created this amazing world in love, of a world which was broken when we turned away, and of a God who is seeking to redeem and to restore the world, who will ultimately bring a new creation into being. You know, when God made creation, when we read those stories in Genesis 1, when God made the world, he said that it was, he said that it was good. Humans were intended to live in harmony with one another, to be fulfilled in this life, to live with God. You'll know that Hebrew word shalom, ideas of wholeness, completeness, healing, well-being, prosperity, justice. But when those good relationships were broken, so of course is shalom, and we end up damaging each other, ourselves, creation, our relationship with God. And that, of course, leads to an absence of shalom, to greed, to poverty. You know, for Tear Fund, our theology of poverty, if I can put it that way, is rooted in the understanding of those four broken relationships. Me to myself, I'm not who I should be. Me to you, our relationship is not what it should be. Me to the created world around me that I exploit it, and then ultimately the broken relationship between me and God. And those broken relationships give rise to what we would call unjust systems, misuse of power, exclusion, racism, oppression, violence, conflict. And Genesis 3, of course, tells us how those relationships were fractured. 
But the Bible tells us the story of how God restores the creation he has made. The whole Bible shows us the character of God. The God of the New Testament, supremely incarnated in Jesus, is also the God of the Old Testament, who cares passionately around social issues, around political arrogance, around exploitation, around corruption, around the suffering of the poor and the oppressed. And Paul says this in his letter to the Colossians, the mission of God is to reconcile all things to himself, whether things on earth or things in heaven. And when we look at Jesus himself, you'll remember that very first sermon he gave, Luke chapter 4, in Nazareth. He quoted from that wonderful passage in Isaiah 61, the Jubilee passage, and Jesus said this, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, release from the darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he said, you'll remember, that that particular scripture was fulfilled in their hearing. You know, Jesus identifies himself as the Messiah, of course he does, who has come to make that jubilee happen. The restoration that God seeks with his creation. If you go back to the Old Testament, Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 25, probably not the bit of the Bible you turn most to, but have a look when you get a moment. It, does, it sets out the land laws that the Israelites were supposed to follow. They had freedom to work. They had freedom to succeed and fail. They were to take responsibility for themselves. But, or and, they were to take responsibility for each other, for the community, and for God's creation. And look, as we look around our world today, whether it's here, whether it's across the UK, whether it's across the world, we think of the pain, we think of the scarcity, we think of the violence, and then we know that we serve a God of abundance. We acknowledge our own sin. We acknowledge the failure of human politics. A big point, not a small one. But the gospel tells us that God is reconciling all things. That is what our world needs to hear. They need to hear it here in Aldershot. They need to hear it around the world. And I think as churches, we are called. We're called to a local response. Here, you are called to serve your community. I know you're doing it in wonderful ways. But also, I think we're called to a global response. To serve our brothers and sisters around the world. How do we bring hope to the disadvantaged? How do we bring hope to those who are suffering injustice. Let me take you on my travels again. Three years ago, I was in Myanmar. My wife, Teresa, who's down the front here, she and I actually got to travel together on that one. It's a bit of a rare treat to do it together. And we went to Myanmar. This was before the military coup that happened a few months ago. Again, Christian minority, about 6%, mainly this Buddhist country. We again visited a little village, very similar to that one in Bangladesh, doing what we call church and community transformation with the church serving its community. There were Bible studies happening in people's um, little houses, little huts, looking at what the Bible says. Who, are, who am I in Jesus? And how has God resourced me? And that famous words in 2 Kings, you know, what have you got? How has God resourced me? And I sat with the church, and again, they were telling me all the things they were doing. They were working on small projects. They owned a grocery store. They were using the profits of that to s go to children's education in the village. They had savings and loans programs again. And they had a rice bank. In my ignorance, I said, what's a rice bank? They looked at me like I was a bit stupid. And they said, well, rice, of course, is our staple diet. This was a poor community. And they said, every time we cook, we take the rice, and we just, all the rice that we would normally cook with, we just take a handful, and we put it in a separate jar. And then when we've got enough, we take that rice between us as the church, and we just bless the poorest people in the community with that rice. You don't need a PhD in development studies for this sort of thing, but it was really, really powerful. I said, well, how's the, what's that done to the church? They said, well, the last couple of years we've doubled in size. Again, before this church and community transformation work, we were looked down on. Now we've been invited onto the village leadership committee. You just see these glimpses of the kingdom of God. Now, 
Myanmar itself is going through desperately difficult times, particularly since the military coup that happened. Please keep this country in your prayers. And I think a little bit about that community in Myanmar. I pray it is still being salt and light. You know, we live, don't we, as Christians, in what we theologians sometimes call the now and the not yet of the kingdom. That tension. We know that a new heaven and a new earth is coming. Revelation says that. God's dwelling, peace will, God's dwelling place will be among his people. They will be his people. He himself be wi with them. He will be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. And that, my friends, will be the ultimate restoration. But what about now? Look around. It doesn't always feel like that. And of course, you will say to me, well, great, Nigel, you hear those local community stories, that's fine, but what about the bigger picture? Violence, conflict, climate degradation, economic collapse, and of course, you're right. And we at Tier Fund, we work on those areas as well, on those bigger issues. We work on peace building, we work on reconciliation, we work on climate justice, we work on livelihoods. But ultimately, the heart of our work at Tier Fund is you. We believe that the church is God's chosen vessel for transformation. And that our role as Tear Fund is simply to support the church in being that vessel of transformation at community level. You know, the local church is wonderfully caused by God for this role. It's everywhere. It's permanent. It doesn't come and go. It is God's plan A. God's plan A is the church, not NGOs, not even Tear Fund. We used to have a president called Rene Padilla, brilliant Latin American theologian, sadly died a couple of years ago. And he, this was his theme, he used to talk about what he called integral mission, that holistic gospel coming to the community. It sounds much better in Spanish. And he said this, the church's purpose is to incarnate the values of the kingdom of God and to witness to the love and the justice revealed in Jesus Christ by the power of the Spirit, for the transformation of human life in all of its dimensions, right across economic, environmental, social, relational, spiritual, both on the individual level and the community level. We work with about 25,000 churches around the world. We believe God's given us a vision to make that 250,000 churches. We'd love to do that with you. We long to be part of seeing the, that transformation come you know, the worldwide church, you, we, together, we are the redeemed people of God. His spirit lives in us. The church is the most powerful change agent on the planet. It is the largest civil society organization on the planet. Not Oxfam will save the children. It is the church of Jesus Christ. And you know, one thing the church can do, not just in bringing that hope, it is also a prophetic voice speaking out for change in society, for those who are poor, for those who are vulnerable, for those who are marginalized. And churches have a role to play. Think about little church in Bangladesh putting an end to child marriage in its area. Now I'm conscious, I said to Bishop Malcolm, do I do a reading? He said, go ahead. So I'm going to just do a little reading from Isaiah chapter 58, verse 6, these following verses. You'll know these verses, but let me read them to you again. Chapter 8, verse 6, is this not the kind of fasting that I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice, to untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free, break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry, to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Your righteousness will go before you. The glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you do away with the yoke of oppression and the pointing finger and malicious talk, if you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness, and your night will become like the noon day. Verses 6 to 10. You know, and in this passage, God gives us a command, but it's a promise as well. 
if you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry, satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise like the noonday. Your night will become like the noonday. And this is a promise, not just for the churches we work with around the world, but for all of us who call ourselves Christians. Our light will rise in the darkness as we serve the most poor, the most marginalized, both thousands of miles away, I believe, and right here on our doorstep. You know, it's easy, I think, to feel compassion fatigue. We give. We don't always see the difference. Can I really make a difference? Can I really serve this individual, this neighborhood? You'll remember Jesus telling the story of the Good Samaritan. Why did he tell it? Because the lawyer's question, the lawyer said, well, okay, I'm supposed to love my neighbor. Who is my neighbor? And Jesus told the story of the man who went out of his way, who crossed the road, literally, who crossed ethnic boundaries, who crossed religious boundaries to provide compassion and help to a person in need. And it's from Jesus, from loving Jesus with all of our heart, our strength and mind, comes that recognition, I believe, that our neighbor is not someone who looks like me. It's not someone who lives next door to me. It's not even somebody I would identify with, but it is somebody in need. That was Jesus' definition of who is my neighbor. And part of this is doing good. And part of this is to use our voice to advocate for justice, to call for justice. I believe that our call as Christians is not just to serve the poor, but to ask why they are poor. Why there is poverty in this world of plenty. How do we best show mercy? How do we use our voice? One of my heroes, look him up, is the Archbishop um, Helder Camara, the Brazilian Archbishop, again, gone to glory now, but a remarkable man who was a real thorn in the side of the Brazilian government. And he famously said this. He said, when I feed the poor, they call me a saint. When I ask why the poor have no food, they call me a communist. I love that quote. Speaking truth to power is not easy. Responding to God's call, trusting, obeying, empowering others will get you into trouble. But as we say at Tier Fund, poverty is not God's plan, but you are. You are God's plan. Your voice, your passion for justice, your generosity. You are God's plan. Let's look at another video, guys, if we can. This one comes from Democratic Republic of Congo, Eastern DRC, one of the most violent, difficult, challenging places on the planet. Look, I hope, at what the church is doing here.
Um, and it says, it says, it has that quote from I, uh, Isaiah 2.4 on the, on the side about beating your swords into plowshares. But this stuff costs. When I was in the Congo in that area about three years ago, the local Anglican bishop and the local Catholic bishop were both on the death list of the local militias for speaking out for peace. Now, of course, each community has got its own issues. That is why the local church is so important. And we work as tier fund where the church is numerically strong and where it's challenged. You know, in Asia, in the Middle East, it looks very different from parts of Africa or Latin America. But transformation is still possible, as it was in Bangladesh, as it was in Myanmar. I remember visiting a small church in Lebanon in the Bekaa Valley, about 10 uh, miles from the Syrian border, when the Syria war had been going for about five years, and they were serving refugees, Muslim background believers, Sunni Muslims coming over the border. They'd set up schools in the camps, they were providing food, they were providing education, and they had a whole congregation of Syrian refugees who'd simply responded to the unconditional love of the church. Let me finish just with a final thought, if I may. When I was on that trip to, South, um, to uh, Southern Africa a few months ago, we were in Zambia as well. We met with um, evangelical and Pentecostal church leaders within Zambia for a, for a big lunch. And we were discussing all of this kind of stuff. And the Pentecostal bishop stood up and he ha has responsible for some 4,000 churches across Southern Africa. And he said this, and it's remained me with it ever since. He said, Nigel, my vision, my vision is for every church to be a transformation center. I love that. I think that holds for us here in the UK. It holds in Africa. It holds all around the world. Every church thinks of itself as a transformation center for its community quarter million churches doing that around the world. You know, since I've been at Tier Fund, I've seen some amazing stuff, some remarkable work, seeing communities lift themselves out of poverty permanently. But it's so much more than that, and that's what I love about the work. You know, poverty is not just the absence of material things. It is that, of course. But it's also the absence of choice, and it's the absence of hope. And we see the breaking in of the kingdom of God to change that. We see that transformation happen. We know we have to be bold. The Bible clearly teaches that our God is a God of justice. He stands up for the weak and for the oppressed, for the widow, for the orphan. How should we respond? Well, I'll take you back to that Isaiah passage to loosen the chains of injustice, to respond to God's call. So I hope we're encouraged. I hope we're inspired by seeing what the church is doing around the world in these tough times. This is the church's opportunity for me. What a calling we have. We see a world pretty devoid of hope around us, don't we? Whether it's here in Aldershot, south of England, across the UK, across the world, these are really, really challenging times. What an opportunity for the church to bring that message of hope. That transformation is possible. You've seen it happen in Alan Nuts. Life in Malawi, in Pastor Shimon's, in Bangladesh, we know the Holy Spirit changes lives. So how might we all get involved? This isn't a heavy ask this morning. We'd love to partner with you. We'd love to build that partnership with New Testament Church of God. Thank you for having me here this morning. I hope we can work together in helping you both serve your, ch your community here and around the world. Sometimes that's just responding to immediate need. East Africa at the moment is seeing a terrible hunger crisis. We're trying to get breakthrough in the media. All of us NGOs working together, but it's really struggling at the moment. If you want to give to that, please just go on to our website, tierfund.org. You'll see how you can do that. Maybe you want to use your voice. Come with us. Campaign against injustice. Speak truth to power. Writing letters, marching, whatever it is. Again, website has details on that. And then ultimately, pray with us. Join us in prayer. People always ask me, what's your most important input? And they always expect me to say money, and sometimes they expect me to say people, and I say it's prayer. It's always prayer. That's our most important resource as Tear Fund. Pray with us. And then if you want to support us on a regular basis, well, we'd love to introduce my friend Caroline. My colleague Caroline gives a wave. Caroline down the front here. Um, she'll have some uh, special forms with her today. If you want to join us, you want to sign up, please feel free to do that. We'd love to have your regular giving. You can change lives, such as we've seen all around the world. You know, sometimes it doesn't feel like we can do much. 
Believe me, you can. Support us. Support us to support the local church, bringing change in those communities to bring good news. Let me finish again with that passage from Luke, and then I'll pray. So Jesus went to Nazareth, where he'd been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. And unrolling it, he found a place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendants, and sat down, and the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were on him. And he began by saying them to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Let's pray. Father, thank you that this scripture is continually fulfilled. Thank you, Lord, that we see you changing lives, bringing transformation, changing communities, changing nations all around the world. Lord Jesus, you said the Spirit of the Lord is on me because God has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. Lord, let that be our calling too. Let us join you in proclaiming good news to those who live in poverty, freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind. Lord, I pray for this wonderful church here in Aldershot as it serves its community here, that we may see transformation come here on the streets of Aldershot. And Lord, we pray that we will together serve churches, your church, around the world, that we may see change come at scale all around the church, all around the world. And Lord, we offer ourselves to you now in your name for that. Amen. Bless you, everyone. Thank you. Can we give uh, Nigel uh, another round of applause <laughs> for sharing the word of the Lord with us? I, I trust and hope that we are suitably encouraged and challenged. We have a, a, a couple of minutes, maybe for one or two questions. Um, it, it's good to have some, some feedback. And so if you have a question, please just quickly raise your hand so we can get a mic to you, so you can answer your question. So Nigel or any one of the team here can answer it. Nothing pressing. Okay, not a problem, not a problem. Um, it's funny how, uh, it's funny how um, Nigel referred to, th and, and there's a number of things here that have, have blessed me, and and I I I, I want to say this that that um, I'll be speaking with with Nigel to see how we, as a local church, can become a transformation uh, centre that would um, not only seek to transfer our own locality, but also to work with you in the work that you do internationally, uh, as, as well. I I see it as um, bang on the money as it were with regards to. Our, our vision of serving God and serving our community. And it was in our um, CPC meeting earlier on this week that uh, we had a devotion in the scripture of I Isaiah 58 uh, was, was, was used and how God had spoken to his, his people and es in essence uh, said, look, the blessings that I have for you are conditional. If you do this. If you do that, then this would happen. And sometimes we just expect it to just happen, but they're conditional. And it means us taking our, our part. You know, it was God who said t to Moses uh, when they're on the verge of crossing the Red Sea, look, use what you have in your hand. I've already given you something to use. Use what you have in your hand. It was Elisha who said to the widow, with the oil, it, it, in essence, use the little oil that you have. But first, 
don't borrow some jars. Extend your capacity to receive what I'm going to do for you. Extend your availability. Make yourself available so that you can be ready to receive what I'm going to do for you. And I want to challenge us today, as we've heard such a, an impacting word, to make ourselves available. Sometimes we're very far from removed or feel far, rem far removed from the pain that is in our community. But brothers and sisters, it's real. It's real. It really is. And I can't think of a better work that the church can do to be the hands and feet and the, the voice of God reaching out to those who are damaged and hurting our community and bringing transformation to their lives. I think it's exciting to see what the Holy Spirit can do. So um, I want people to come on board. I want people to come on board. This isn't a me thing. This is a we thing. And so you'll, you'll hear uh, in due course, um, and as I said, I'll be speaking with Nigel to see how we can partner with the work that you do and, and, and uh, make ourselves available for you to help us in this locality. I just want to do a, a couple of things. Remember, we have our Sunday school starting at 12.30. Um, so please feel free to stay for our Sunday school if you can. That would be wonderful. Um, I, you heard in the announcements um, about the NTCG Roadshow. Um, it's going to be for our area. It's going to be on the 10th of November. So the 10th of December, the 10th of December, at the Wilsden Church. Um, the reason why we are have organised and booked for a a minibus is that if you're planning to go on your own, number one, you need to let me know because we need to register you uh, via Eventbrite. And number two, it's very hard to park there. If you've been to Wilson Church before, it's very hard to park there. So it's easy just to get a minibus and we will go together. So please, I want to encourage you, encourage you to sacrifice a morning, maybe a little more than that, um, and, and let's go and see how we can plug into the vision of our administrative bishop with regards to moving uh, this church uh, forward. So put your name on the list. We're only asking for a contribution. We're not going to pay for the cost if you're to um, um, charge one. I didn't want to discourage people from going. So it's only a contribution of five pounds per person. Please make sure you put your name on the list. It's on a first come, first serve basis. So I want uh, people to put the name on this as quickly as possible. That would be wonderful. Also, uh, we have um, the latest edition of the Word for Today in the foyer. Um, please, uh, they're free. Um, take one um, or take one and bless somebody with it. it it's, a, it's a powerful devotional and one that, that um, I know many people use. And it is a blessing, certainly it's a blessing to me. It really, really is. And I would encourage you. Uh, to take one. If it runs out, we do have more where that came from. Um, but please feel free to um, take one for yourself or take one for um, someone else and bless them. You can also order them personally online, but for those who, who are not able to do that, we do have free copies um, available. To mention um, next week, that is the 6th of November, we shall be having a guest speaker with us, Reverend Nathan Hutchinson from uh, New Testament Church God Harvest Temple in Wolverhampton um, will be our guest speaker. Reverend Nathan has spoken uh, here before, a, a wonderful and powerful uh, uh, man of God, and he'll be with us. Uh, that's this coming Sunday um, in our morning uh, service, which starts at 10.30. Finally, last week, uh, some of you were able to either watch online um, uh, or some of you actually here in person as we baptize, um, I think it's about 10 candidates. Um, yeah, put your hands together.
Now, I have, some of them are here this morning. Some have expressed that they, they were not able to be here. But I have some um, certificates that I'd like to um, hand out to them. I'm going to ask my wife. <laughs> just to help me in this and just ha hand out these um, certificates. When your name is called, please could you come and please could we show some love um, for them as they come and collect the certificates. And mentioning love, the first person that I'd like to call is Love Tamira. Love, can you come please? <laughs> love was our youngest candidate at six years old expressing personally her faith in Jesus Christ thank you you can take a seat next is Samuel Tamir Tamirat Samuel please give your a round of applause Next, we have Noemi Cotorio Cavaca. Next, we have Oreo Lua Adiemi. Next, we have Mary Keat. And finally, put your hands together for Mrs. Claire Fraser Babin. The others will be presented with their certificate at a later J. Jay did have one. I think it might be Marcus. Anyway, um, for the sake, I think I'm going to invite our worship team just to come very quickly. They said you've got to style it out somehow. Just to come very quickly. Always be prepared, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. 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 I just want to thank you. I just want. Just to thank him, let's just stand. Let's just thank him, even for what we heard this morning. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just, I just want. so good. Amen? Amen. 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 And finally, <laughs> Jay Reed. Thank you much. Can we stand? Can we stand? Father, we just want to thank you for this day. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for stirring our hearts and calling us to action. I pray, Father God, for Tear Fund. I pray for the work that they do nationally, regionally, and internationally. I pray, Father God, that you'll continue to supply their every need. I pray for the workers that sacrificially serve others, go into dangerous places in the world to bring about transformation, who help others to bring about transformation in their locality. Father, I pray for Nigel and the rest of the staff there. I pray, Father God, that our nation and, and other nations will be stirred to support this organization. And we know that there's others there as well, but I will be stirred to um, support however we can to make sure that your word and your love is spread throughout this world. Father, we thank you for the privilege that we've had of having Tear Fund with us today. And we pray that your glory will be continued to be seen in them. Father, we lift you up and we give you praise. I thank you for everyone who's come here today. May your blessing be with them. May everyone who's watched also be blessed also. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's pronounce our benediction as we close. The words will come on the screen very shortly. And now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain, and be of us all, both now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Please feel free to join us for our Sunday school if you're able to. Uh, you're more than welcome, but God bless you and have a great day.